With just two days till the election, we want to hear the closing arguments from both sides. First, the Republicans and their last presidential nominee, Mitt Romney, who's been campaigning for the GOP candidates in more than two dozen states across the country. Governor, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Thanks, Chris. Good to be with you. As we say, two days before the election, what is the Republican closing argument? Why should voters on Tuesday vote for the GOP? Well, first, this is really the, the last chance for America uh, to pass judgment on the Obama administration and on its policies. And the president himself said he's not on the ballot, but his policies are. That includes hesitancy and weakness abroad, which has led so, to a certain degree to the rise of ISIS. It also includes the, uh, the violation of the most fundamental promise of Obamacare to let people keep their doctor and their insurance if they wanted to keep it. It's a policy also of basic amnesty for those that come to the country illegally. I think that's where we know where the president's going to head as soon as the election is over. And by the way, those are policies that are not helpful for the poor in this country. Under the president, the, the policies have led to greater poverty and greater income uh, gap between the rich and the poor. The Republican Party is saying, look, we're going to take a different direction. We're going to break the blockade in Washington by having a Repu Re Republican Senate. We'll have an energy policy, which means we're going to have the Keystone Pipeline. We're going to secure the border. We're going to jumpstart the economy. And we're actually going to help get people out of poverty. And their kids will have better schools. Governor, I want to pick up on the issue of the economy, which, according to the polls, is everyone's top concern. The president this weekend made the argument that he and Democrats have made some real progress since the recession. Take a look, sir. Over the past 55 months, our businesses have added 10.3 million new jobs. For the first time in six years, the unemployment rate is below 6 percent. And on Thursday, we learned that over the past six months, our economy has grown at its fastest pace since 2003. Now, the president says Democrats want to raise the minimum wage and spend more money on infrastructure jobs and that your party opposes all that. Look, the, the, the question is, uh, is whether or not anything's going to get done in Washington. Uh, of course, the economy comes back after recession. The president's policies delayed that recovery, have made it much more difficult for Americans to get back to work. Record numbers of Americans are, have dropped out of the workforce. But we have, we have such gridlock in Washington, in part because the Senate has put up a blockade that keeps any new bill that the House passes, and they've passed some 370 bills, they don't ever get to the president's desk because the Senate says no. It's time for us to break that blockade, pass some legislation, actually get jobs growing in America again, put these pieces of legislation on the president's desk. We do that, you're going to see the president sign some of them. We'll see some increase in wages. You're going to see an increase in jobs. And I think the American people recognize it's time for action as opposed to this finger pointing and blame in Washington. Uh, Governor, one way that Democrats are going after Republicans this year is the same way that President Obama went after you in 2012. In fact, it's, people are now calling it getting Romneyed. Uh, here are Democrat uh, Michelle Nunn going after her opponent in the Georgia Senate race, as well as Illinois Governor Pat Quinn, both of them going after their businessmen opponents. He said that, uh, from his own words, that he spent the majority of his career outsourcing jobs. And, uh, you know, I just question whether that's the criteria that we want in the person who is running for Senate. My opponent is a job eliminator. As I said earlier, he's uh, started firms to teach other firms how to outsource. Governor, have you come up with a way that uh, businessmen who are running should answer that? Well, you know, I think you're finding Democrats across the country pretty desperate at this stage, uh, trying to distance themselves from the president who they vote for time and time again, and even won't admit that they do. And, and I think the American people have recognized that these, uh, these attacks uh, on a person's character, uh, the attacks on women, the attacks related to race, all these things are just are getting weaker and weaker, and people are saying, look, we're tired of being manipulated by, uh, by Democratic candidates who take us for granted. I think you're going to find that these arguments have less and less sway, and people are stopping and saying, look, do you really want to see change in Washington? Do you want to actually have a, a blocking of, the, of the, uh, the, 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 the whole gridlock process? And, and do you actually want to have progress on, on things like the economy, schools, health care, and, and a strengthening of America's hand abroad? And by the way, one other issue we haven't spoken about, which I think is very much on people's minds, is the 
if you will, the less than competent management of the federal government. Everything from the IRS to the Veterans Administration to the Centers for Disease Control and HHS itself on the implementation of Obamacare. People want to see real change and recognize as long as you have all the same players, Harry Reid and Barack Obama blockading any kind of progress, you're going to see America going in the same direction we've seen it. But, but Governor, you know, we, let's talk about the Republicans and how much they've changed. After 2012, the Republican National Committee did what was called a post-mortem on what they needed to do to change, to do better in the election, how to reach out more. Here's what they had to say about Hispanics. We must embrace and champion comprehens comprehensive immigration reform. If we do not, our party's appeal will continue to shrink to its core constituencies only. But, Governor, after the Senate, in a bipartisan basis, passed comprehensive immigration reform, House Republicans blocked it. Well, what you're going to see is when you have Republican House and Republican Senate, you're going to have to have, of course, Democrats still vote for the, the bills Republicans come up with because you can't get something through the Senate unless you have 60 votes, and that means you've got to get a lot of Democrats. But you're going to see a, a provision, first of all, to secure the border, second of all, to deal with those who've come here illegally, and third, to make sure that our immigration policies are more open and transparent to the many people who do want to come here illegally. That's going to happen. You're going to see a bill actually reach the desk of the president if we finally have someone besides Harry Reid sitting in the Senate. So we're going to get it done. I think Republicans in the House were looking at what was coming from the Senate and saying, you know what, we can do better if we pick up some more seats in the Senate. I, I can't tell you whether we're going to win the Senate uh, on Tuesday, but I can tell you we're going to pick up a lot of seats, and we have a lot better prospect of having a piece of legislation which deals with the issue in the way I described. Governor, uh, a couple of weeks ago, Republican Party Chair Reince Priebus put out 11 principles for what he says the party should stand for this year, but they were awfully general. Let me put up a couple of them. On the economy, we need to start growing America's economy instead of Washington's economy so that working Americans see better wages and more opportunity. On health care, we need to start over with real health care reform that puts patients and their doctors in charge, not unelected bureaucrats in Washington. While people may agree with those principles, it doesn't really put much meat on the bones. And I guess the question is, have Republicans made a mistake not running on a more specific agenda of their own? And you keep talking about breaking the gridlock. Yes, a Republican Congress, House and Senate will pass bills, but will they pass bills that the president will sign? Well, that's, of course, the test. And the good news is, in many cases, the president will sign them with regards to, uh, for instance, uh, uh, the economy. The president has asked for trade promotion authority. Harry Reid won't give him that authority. Republicans want him to have that authority. We want to see trade negotiations underway and see if we can't find more places to sell American goods. That will help the economy. The president will sign that. With regards to health care, for instance, uh, when, when Reince Priebus talks about uh, uh, adjusting our health care system to make Obamacare work better, look, uh, we've got Obamacare at least for the next couple of years. There are a number of things a lot of Democrats in the Senate agree with Republicans on. One is to keep the penalty uh, for people uh, who are in uh, part-time work from uh, driving more people uh, out of full-time jobs. And so th these kinds of changes, I think you'll actually see the president sign. I I'm absolutely convinced that you're going to see with a Republican-led Senate, if we're lucky enough to get that, you're going to see bills get to the president's desk. He will sign some. Some he won't sign. No question about that. He'll veto some. But I think at that point we'll find out who really is the party of no. Finally, uh, as soon as this election is over on Tuesday, you know we're going to all start talking about 2016 and the presidential race. And one of the big questions is whether or not you're going to run again. Your most recent comment on that was you said probably not, but, quote, things could change. On the other hand, and let's put this up, your wife, Ann Romney, had a different answer. She, she seemed to slam the door shut. She wrote when asked, uh, are you guys going to run again? Done. Completely. Not only Mitt and I are done, but the kids are done. Done, done, <laughs> done. That is six duns, Governor, in one answer, which brings up the big question, who speaks for the Romneys, you or Mrs. Romney? <laughs> uh, we both speak for the Romneys. We're both Romneys. Uh, but, uh, you know, I found that any time you say something different in answering a question uh, than you said it in the, in the prior uh, time you answered it, it raises a lot of speculation as to whether things are changing. And, and the reality is this, and I'll say it the same way I have uh, for quite some time, which is I'm not running, I'm not planning on running, uh, but I'm not going to add anything else to that story.
So, you're, but you're, you're not saying you're done. Uh, what I'm saying is I'm not running. I'm not planning on running. That, that's all I got for you, Chris. No more than that. Uh, finally, uh, would the results of this election, uh, if it's a big Republican year, if it's a big Democratic year, could that affect your decision at all as to whether or not to run? Uh, no, I can tell you this. It's going to be a big Republican year. There, I, I can't tell you whether we get the Senate or not, but we're going to pick up a lot of seats in the Senate. We're going to pick up a lot of seats in the House. We're going to pick up seats in states across the country, and that's in part because, uh, as the president said, his policies are on the ballot this year. And, and frankly, this right. is people in America passing judgment on the Obama administration, with which they're not very happy. Governor Romney, we want to thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Always good to talk with you, sir. Thanks, Chris. Good to be with you.